I could play devil's advocate for a moment, I know you might, won't mind me doing that, but if we could look at, um, you know, the, the way that um, corporate Australia and our big events do have a welcome to country, we have started, especially in the last couple of years, to ha see that important uh, cultural... Uh, Indigenous cultural injection into modern day Australia. Um, I think Australians more broadly, and perhaps the the sixty percent that voted no in the referendum, saw this voice uh, as you did in many ways, um, and saw this as um, perhaps more politics and less solutions in a way that could solve what are intractable crises. I think the thing that bothers people the most is the alcoholism, the violence um, in remote Aboriginal communities somehow and the, the helplessness in many ways. What are the practical solutions? Does that have to start with treaty? Can't things be done now, practically? Look, I think we can do both. Uh, I think it's really important to understand why uh, we have these situations uh, amongst our people, and that is that when you have your land taken away from you, when you're told you're not allowed to speak your language, mm -hmm. when you have your children taken, and you have a high incarceration rate, which means yeah. probably a couple of family members, uh, that's that they are symptoms of the invasion that happened over 200 years okay, ago. They but, are the symptoms I'm talking years, about. But 200 so, years on, how how does, you know, someone like me or my parents or our friends fix that? Well, we embrace the true history of the country, have yeah. conversations with Aboriginal people about mm. what it looks like going forward. Genuine conversations. Yeah. But, but, now, but, but, but if we how go back to under Howard... going to fix it? There, is, there are race relations in this country that are harming Aboriginal people. The racism that you see and hear uh, in the media uh, yeah. are Is it the racism of racism low expectations? Is, a, is that what you're talking about? It's racism against um, people of colour. And if we look at the incarceration rates, particularly in the Northern Territory, yeah. where we have 60, 70, 80 per cent of Aboriginal people in, in prison for yeah. stealing oh, and a chocolate it's bar. I mean, kids it's as young as 10 it's are totally in prison for stealing But when you say bars. it's racism, and then, who are you talking about in particular? Because I think you just mentioned well, the media. Then. If, if we don't... Well, I think racism is throughout our society. I think there is evidence amongst Northern Territory police, particularly, where racism has been identified. And I think we have to address where racism is identified so that we're not targeted. We deserve opportunity like everybody else in this country. Yeah. And if we weren't targeted at the rate that we were, then that would allow more opportunity. If, yeah. if our land wasn't... Uh, being taken away from us and all of those things that I sure. spoke about earlier, Laura, mm. uh, that's that's about destroying families and communities. You take okay. enough away, then the ultimate, uh, you know, outcome of that is mm. that people can't function and that's what we're seeing. So, so demonising and... Um, locking people up more is not going to make this situation any better. It's going okay. to make it worse. And we as... A, as Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you then. We but as... if I could just ask you, <laughs> if I could just ask you one final question here, because I think this is a really important one. When you talk about opportunity and equality, it's got to be a quality of opportunity, not a quality of outcome, right? Because that's a really dangerous path to go down. And that's perhaps where the mistakes have Aboriginal been made. and Torres Strait Islander people need to self-determine their own destiny and governments cannot dictate to families and communities what is best for them. And that's what we see far too often. That's what we've seen for decades and decades. We have solutions in our own communities that aren't funded. We have, we have youth programs around this country that are being defunded, even yeah. under Labor, 
are being defunded that have incredible solutions okay. and people working on the ground at the grassroots level, they're the, they're the self-determined solutions that should mm. be supported and resourced. OK. Um, I mean, when you talk about Aboriginal people being locked up for stealing a chocolate bar, no one in the Northern Territory has been locked up for stealing a chocolate bar. Most of the Aboriginal yes, people have behind more. closed bar, uh, behind bars, yes, they have because more. they've committed violent crime. Whom? No, no, Laura. There are children who've been locked up for for stealing a chocolate bar. Who? Ten-year-old children. And no, Lydia, that's not right. Uh, there are there are. Yeah, it is, it is. And uh, this happened when I worked at Amnesty International. Mm -hmm. We're investigating um, the high rates of youth incarceration from the age of 10. And we found that there were a number of children that were locked up for absolute petty, petty crimes, mm. that these children have disability, that a lot of our okay. children in... Um, our young children have FASD, which is an alcohol fetal yep. syndrome, where they actually have a disability and they're being locked up because they have a disability. That That's not how we treat our children in this country. Mm. And just because they're black kids, you know, it, it doesn't mean that, that they should be locked up. They need love and care and community, just like any other kid in this country. Lydia, it's great to talk to you. Uh, thanks so much. This is uh, certainly Thanks, revealing this ongoing conversation we need to have. We'll see you soon.